Hannah Grab and John Galliano is always a match made in artistic heaven. Here's a full tutorial of my attempt to recreate Pat McGrath's look from Mesa Margiela's recent runway show. Apply lip balm first so that it has time to moisturize while you do the rest. Taking a cotton pad with alcohol, I'm sweeping that across my brow. This removes any oil on the face that would make anything hard to stick. And this will create a better base for blocking your brows. Palmer's purple glue, saturating all my brow hairs, sweeping back and forth and in circular motion. Then taking a spoolie and brushing them into place. Making sure that each hair is tapered to your skin. I mean completely flat against your skin. Use your finger and press that. Let in. it dry and when it's non-sticky and smooth, that's when you know you can go in with the second layer. So second layer, going in the direction of your brows and then pressing that in again with your fingers. A loose setting powder, pack that into your brow and press, press, press. Using an orange to cancel out my brows. Applying that all over my hairs, but I don't want too much because I don't want that orange to peek through. Use a full coverage foundation stick, apply it in the direction of your brows and then press it in with a beauty sponge. Then set with a full coverage powder foundation. My brows won't be the best block because I made the mistake of choosing a damn foundation shade that will not match the rest of my face because i just decided oh after blocking i was going to attempt to create a more white porcelain base <laughs> but in my defense i had a freaking migraine doing this and my brain wasn't burning for that dull poreless skin i'm using one size beauty's new tacky primer i want that shit stuck then nars light reflecting foundation but if you have a cream stick foundation use that instead i have enlarged pores so shadow blending brush i went into the pores of my nose and just to blend that right in all the crevices making it as poreless as possible once that was all blended in i added a full coverage concealer all over my skin this is going to give that insanely smoothed out skin like Horrorless. i'm going for that hauntingly beautiful ghastly look that pat mcgrath so beautifully pioneered using a more cool tone contour and then using a full coverage lighter than my skin powder foundation carving and setting it all in for my brows i'm using a deep brown eyeliner dotting where i want that brow to go and connecting those dots what i love about this specific look this aesthetic that she created is that it's perfectly imperfect so i'm not caring too much about the crisp clean lines i'm adding a beauty mark above my brow just so in the end i am reminded that i want to add beauty if marks. i don't put some kind of reminder i forget layering blushes i am adding a more natural blush above that contour and then a more intense blush in the middle of my cheeks to add more depth and variety of color like eye primer but you can use any primer it just helps those colors show a bit better which i'm assuming will disappear when i add that mask in the end taking that first blush shade i use and sweeping that in the inner corner to the outer corner towards my temple just to make it more cohesive with the look and a little underneath my eye i chose a deep muted pink a brown and a deep purple for my eyes starting off from the lightest as you do with any shadow look then deepening as i go i'm aiming for the inner and outter corners of my eyes really dragging and making it dramatic leaving that middle part pretty untouched almost like a dramatic halo eye doing the same on the bottom i'm not going all the way in again just leaving the middle pretty much untouched then lining the bottom with a dark eyeshadow for more intensity my favorite a white shadow on the fingertip just to emphasize that middle part that halo tapping whatever foundation is left on my sponge just the outer edges of my lips then using the same dark shade i used on my eyes lining the cupid's bow with a small domed blending brush and keeping that pigment mainly in the middle of my lips finally packing some black shadow on the lower lip right in the middle when you add gloss it'll naturally just bleed outwards if you stray too far just take that beauty sponge and dab the sides of your lips again black eyeliner i'm lining my upper waterline and dragging that out slightly outwards then adding those beauty marks on a mascara use the tip of the wand vertical to shape and taper finally that gloss if it's messy like this wonderful now onto the main event before applying the mask i'm spraying my entire face with a waterproof setting spray to be honest i'm not sure if this is the best to do because like is it going to repel the water and make it look funky but i wanted to try so here i am trying squeezing freeman's peel off cucumber mask into a container a one to two ratio is fine you want to be able to move all of this around pretty freely without it being caught or skipping i had an airbrush but i opted for this because it's easier for anyone that wants to try but i will say an airbrush is better because it applies more even more controlled while a brush i notice has more chance of moving the makeup around an even application and i noticed that it also gets caught in my face but buzz. it still works it still works i applied around three to four layers letting it dry completely in between and speeding the dry time up with a handheld fan but you can also use a hair dryer Cool I'm sure setting. that if you use a brush that it's a big brush with longer bristles for flexibility One thing that I wanted to try was after I applied the mask and after it dried I wanted to see if the makeup would apply smoothly and it does very very smooth So I recommend doing this especially because after you apply the mask I feel like some of the color could be lost. So this is the finished look It's not exactly the same obviously, but it's the closest we can get until Pat shows us her amazing lab with her cocktail doll mix Thanks for watching. Love you. Bye